Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Carlson's Lab. Let's get started. What is this strange-looking electronic device that somebody has put together? Well, let's discover what this thing is, and uh, it has a cord on it, so let's power it up and see if it's supposed to do whatever it's supposed to do. So first of all, by looking at it, we see it has a radio dial. It looks like it's two pieces of aluminum, and there's a bunch of outlets on it with a bunch of red dots above the outlets as a rocker switch and a push button it's in this old looks like a again a radio case so this looks like this may have been an old radio that was repurposed for something there's a handle on the top of it it's very tattered looking what's on the back so that's the way it is so let's uh, open this up Okay, so what's inside? So what do you think is going to be inside? Take a guess. You might want to pause it. Take a guess at what do you think is going to look like inside here because I'm uh, pretty much on the same page you are. I haven't unclipped this yet, so we're going to figure this out together. So here we go. Big surprises. It's definitely some sort of homebrew project. Look at this. It's always fun to discover things together. So I saved this. For her, so that we could take a look at this together and just really go through this. So, uh, I don't know, what would you call this? Reality video? Because it's exactly what it is. You know, I don't know. So this is, uh, this is as real as it gets at this time. So, uh, are we going to be able to make this thing work? Look at this. This is uh, put together on this perf board kind of stuff. It is somebody's project. So let's guess at what's going on here. So first of all, we see a whole bunch of outlets. So already I'm seeing a path. So I see TO220 package devices on the outlets. So most likely these are going to be triax. So that's going to be switching these outlets. So we know that the outlets are going to be switched. There's a bunch of neon bulbs up in here. And I would imagine that those are probably behind those circles, right? So, in fact, lamp here, let's see if I, yeah, see that? There, I shine the lamp here, you can see that? Anyways, there it is, see right there, the neon bulbs, get, get that in the correct area, there it is, and let's see if I can get this one to shine in here, oops, there it is. Interesting. Okay, so there's neon bulbs in behind these. So these are obviously indicators. So I would imagine that the... Yeah, see, they're tied to the outlet. So these little neon bulbs are indicating when the outlets are turning on and off, I would imagine. So... Now we need some way to trigger those triacs. Now in a modern device, you would have something like an opto isolator doing that. So I'm just going to zoom on into this, get really close to the board here. And let's see, get a little bit more light on the subject. So it's looking like, give me one second here. I'm just going to get a bit more light on the subject. we go it's looking like these are going to be read relays and this is most likely what they're using for isolation so instead of having an opto isolator what they're doing is they're using read relays to turn on the triax i would imagine because there would have to be high side isolation because of the way that a triac works in a circuit in a switching circuit so i would imagine so somebody has actually taken the time get this somebody has taken the time in this project to wind this fine wire onto the top of a reed of a little reed switch so reed switches are magnetically controlled switches so if you have a magnet around uh if you push a magnet across the reed relay it turns it on and some of them will actually turn them off depending on whether they're normally open or normally closed 
So these, these are very commonly found, these little glass tubes are very commonly found in the uh, entrance alarms for doors. So you know, hey, the little square blocks, and then when you close the door, uh, the, the square blocks come, come close together, and then there's a magnet on one side, and on the other side there's one of these little glass tubes. And it, uh, it, you know, it basically it closes that little switch when the door is closed. And then when you open the door, the magnet pulls away from the reed relay, or the little reed tube, and then the contacts open and then you get your alarm, right? Again, they can be configured in, uh, there's all sorts of different configurations for reed tubes, but um, there, there you have it. Now, it looks like, as you can see, somebody has taken the time to wind this hair fine wire over the glass in order to make these, like, electromagnet, to, to form an electromagnet to trigger the little reed tube inside. So there's four of them here. So one, two... Three, four. I would imagine these larger transistors, which uh, look to have quite a bit of, um, you see that on there? That is 10 whiskers. So 2SB89. So it's a PNP transistor, right? 2SB, B being PNP. So 2SA and 2SB are PNP transistors. 2SC and 2SD are NPN transistors. So these are going to be PNP transistors. So there's four of them there. So I would imagine by looking at this, we'll see if I'm completely off the mark, but I, I have a feeling that this is how it's going to be. So these would end up driving these, right? Because you're going to need something to drive the, these coils on top of here. So we have four large transistors driving the coils here. And then on the top, we have sets of transistors up here. And we have one down here as well. Nice little burnt resistor there, too. I'm thinking that this is a discrete Johnson counter. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that this is a discrete type Johnson counter. So what would this be used for? Maybe for Christmas lights or something like that? Let's back this out here. So maybe for Christmas lights, maybe this is supposed to sequence. So to turn you know, Christmas lights on and off or something, somebody may have put that together to sequence Christmas lights. I see a uh, transformer down here, and there's some writing on it. So 9 volts, 0 and 9 volts, 200 volts on the primary. So was this thing possibly made in Japan? So maybe somebody put this together in Japan or something like that. Good possibility. What is this? I'm beginning to think so. I guess this was put on the bottom here to stop this from shorting, maybe, on the transformer or something like that. Okay. So that looks like what's happening here, I think. Well, let's find out anyway. So what I'll do is I am going to plug this thing in to my current limited isolation transformer and variac supply and very slowly bring that up to 200 volts. And we will see what happens. Okay, give me a moment. I'm going to get this thing all hooked up. And uh, let's see if we can make this do something. I have this attached to my isolation transformer and current limited variac supply and it's plugged into the 200 volt AC outlet and it's going through the current limiting right now so the voltage would be a little bit low, probably about 180 or something like that. So let's see what this thing does, if it does anything. So I'll turn this on. Oh, and I do see just a little bit of flickering in the neons here so uh, maybe if I can turn out some lights maybe you can see that too. I'll just cover these lamps up. See that? A little bit of an orange glow in the neons. So that's a little bit of leakage in the circuit. So I guess you could say if there was a load, like an incandescent load across these triacs, that would disappear, right? That leakage would just, you know, basically get shorted out by the uh, by the incandescent load. So that's pretty standard for something that's, um, you know, something a circuit that's built like this that has neon bulbs across it. So you do get a faint glow there. That can be... Uh, I guess you could say compensated for with uh, basically a small resistor across the bulb itself so that they so it doesn't try to ionize or uh, strike before it's supposed to do that. So uh, yeah, I can see this, you know, just a very simple circuit, right? So I don't know if the switch is on. That's me pushing the red button. No, let's try pushing it the other way. 
turning this on. Look at that. So it is a sequencer. Well, that was really quite easy. So yeah, that looks, let's hold this up. You can hear it clicking too. Now in a modern device, you wouldn't, you wouldn't actually hear any clicking because they would have opto isolators. So the little clicking is a little read relays closing and opening in these, under these little magne magnetic coils that he's uh, wound here. And the little electromagnets that he's wound around it, I guess you could say. So. Interesting. Press that red button again. Well, that really messes up the flow. So I press the red button again. And now it's just doing something completely bizarre. I'll press it again. Yeah, it is, it is acting very, very strange. So every time you press the button, it seems to almost make this thing act up. So I'll press the button again. Again. Oh, and now it just locked them on. So that's it. That's all it does. Now it's stuck. So I'll shut it off. Turn it back on. Push the red button. And now it started out doing some sort of odd random thing again. Touch the red button. Oh, and that locked it again. So shut it off. Turn it on. Yeah, so see, it's kind of neat. It seems to be completely analog wonder, right? It's uh, completely random. Just basically the length, I guess, the length of time that you press that button, it will set a different type of flash. So that's kind of neat without having to do anything with any, any anything digital or anything like that. It's completely random. So you can get different effects. If you were to, say, plug a Christmas tree into this and have, say, four layers of lights, you could make it do all sorts of different things just by tapping that, that little red button a couple of times and playing with it. So it's completely random. It is kind of neat. So this could be used as, again, like some sort of a light sequencer. Uh, judging by the transistors used and the parts used in this, it's a mixture of carbon film and carbon composition resistors. It's got electrolytics and ceramic discs. And it's got the older diodes with the stripes on them for the ratings. I would say I would date this 70s. Uh, something like that. Probably put together in the 70s. Possibly disco-y era. Uh, maybe somebody was trying to create some sort of a light thing or took this portable with them, right? Because it does seem like, you know, it has its own little box and you could, you know, take this thing portable. Well, let's take a look at it, what it looks like through the front. I'll just uh, shut the lights off here and see what that looks like through the front. So I'll move these out of the way and I'll turn this off. So this would be indicator to the operator. Why they used a, a, a radio dial face in here is really strange. Maybe just to fill the hole or maybe that's just what was in there. You see, so... Now, these would obviously work. These would switch a load because these are right across. This is the triax doing this, basically. So if I was to plug an incandescent lamp in there of some sort, it would trigger an incandescent lamp for sure because the, the neons are, are lighting up full brightness here. I wonder what I could plug into this to... You know what? Uh, give me a second. I'll go grab a night light, and uh, I think I've got some incandescent night lights. I'll plug the... or uh, cover the sensor and it should light the, light the night light. I'll be right back. All right, so polarized outlet on the night lights, which of course doesn't make anything any easier. So we'll just cover the sensor up here and hold it like so. And uh, let's see what happens. Let's plug this off here. See if I can plug this the other way if I don't get so much of a flicker. There it is. So yeah, they're all working. So you could technically switch incandescent Christmas lights on and off with this thing. So unfortunately, uh, this thing here would would be no good at 110, right? With the way it is, I imagine this wouldn't switch correctly. So uh, let's see what happens if I turn down. I'll turn this lamp back on so I get a bit of light on the situation here. So I'll turn the, uh, I'll shut this off, plug this into the 110 side, and turn it back on. I better put my safety back in there. I have a safety for the, uh, the on my Variac supply for the 220 outlet, so I don't accidentally plug 110 items in there. Plug that in there. That's saved me a time or two. So, so here we go. I'll turn this on. And, uh, so I only get one glowing at 110. 
So if this is 9 volts, or 120, I should say, if this is 9 volts at 200, so at 100, probably 4.5, something like that. And at 120, maybe we're dealing with 5 volts or something like that. So what I'm going to do is, you can see somebody's paralleled this one already, and it's not doing anything, because I believe this one here is most likely going to be for this one, and then we have this one, which will most likely be for this one. This resistor would most likely be for that one, and this one would most likely be for this. So this one is for each one of these, you know, transistors. So somebody's already paralleled this, maybe because we, it had a, maybe it went open or something like that. Who knows what they've done. So, uh, let's see here. So I'll shut this off, and I'll restart it, and see if, uh, let's, pure experimental sake. So give me a second, I'm just going to grab a resistor. So, uh, 50 ohms, okay, 56. Okay, so 56, 56 ohms here. And uh, let's see, what one can we try to make trigger here? So this is gonna be on the low side. I gotta be careful I don't hurt these little wires. So it'll put this across this one here. Okay, so this is gonna be on the low side, so I'm not worried about getting shocked or anything. So there's a, a good chance I can make this run at uh, Good chance I can make that run at 120. All right, so I'm just tacking resistors in at this point. I'll share this with you. So I'm just uh, putting these in, seeing if I can uh, make this thing run at, uh, that'll be fine as long as it stays and doesn't fall out. Of course, it's just hanging there, so yeah, exactly. So uh, that's what I figured it would do. So I'll get this back out of here. Of course, this is all unplugged right now. So uh, I'm pretty safe doing this. I got to be very careful around these hair like wires. Again, this is just a tack situation. I'm just tacking these in to see if we can make this thing run it at, uh, at 120. My Variac actually puts it a little shy of 120. It's about 115 to 118. So. So there's that, and uh, these little wires I can see just in the way, just ready to get damaged. So they're very, very small wires. Okay, so that should work. Very hot connection there. Takes a while for these to cure. Move that out of the way. Okay, so we got that one and that one. Ooh, this one's going to be kind of rough. So, yeah, that's definitely going to be rough. That one is on the underside. So let's see, how are we going to do that? See if I can uh, focus in on this a little more. I mean, you can actually use the camera itself as an aid. So do that. So let's see. What I'm trying to do is just push the leads underneath the resistor underneath the two end leads and um, it's right there and right there and then of course just tack them into place so hopefully this one will stay boy these leads really these other resistor leads really don't like to take solder it's almost like they need a little bit of help a little bit of extra flux we have to heat them so hot to take them. I guess, you know, it's been sitting for so long. There's a lot of oxidization on it. I can see it's just, it's still trying to cure. Is there, or harden up, I guess you should say. Or I should say here. So I'll put this, move this out of the way here. Put that in there like so. Just trying to see what's going on. Of course, this thing isn't cooperating. I'm trying to do all of this. Show you what's going on. There it is. So you see that there? So, see if I can uh, get this all into here. The leads do not want to take any solder. Stay. Okay. I think that's good. You know, watch that. It's taking a long time to get solid there. See, it just got solid. You can actually see the little tip of it just get solid. See that? It's actually still bubbling. So I have to apply a lot of heat to those old resistors to make anything happen. So we got two of them that are kind of cooperating. That one here, 
I don't think this one here did cooperate. These leads just didn't... The, the resistors that I'm putting in do take solder quite nicely. The, um, the resistors that are in the board do not want to take... Do not want to take solder whatsoever. So this one here looks like it has uh, some pretty fresh solder on it. Somebody's tacked one in on the top. So let's see what that's about. Since there's solder on the top, that means that it should be a pretty easy solder in job here. There it is. Let me cure up for a moment. That's much, much easier. Steady my hand. There it is. Okay, so what do you think? You think we're going to get any action out of this thing? Let's see if we can, if we can get any one, 120 action out of this thing. Get this out of the way. I'll back this out just a little bit so we can see what's going on. And put this back in over here. Power it up. Okay, here we go. And push button on. Aha! All except for the last one. That's no good. Maybe I need a little bit more on there. Maybe 50 isn't enough to make this last one. Or maybe it just didn't start right. Let's try that, because I remember the last one didn't want to start right before. So I'll turn that on. Tap the button. Nope. Let's uh, drop this down even more. Okay, so let's really make this thing Frankenstein. I'll shut this off and uh, disconnect this. And uh, let's add another one onto the top of this one so we can have like the uh, resistive ladder happening here and climb the resistive ladder. So that there and in this here and... Uh, Maybe this will stay. I don't know. I haven't really tinned that. Just stay. Okay. We have a resistive ladder going on. Okay. And again. Here we go. Ha-ha! So we have an effective job at 120. So I don't really want to... This is going to stick out. So I'll shut this off and see if we can get it to do the Johnson counter properly. Oh, didn't do it. Turn it back on. Tap. Ha ha! Okay. Success. Hey, you know what? Let's take a look at the back side of the circuit board. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see what kind of goodness is on the back side of this. You care to take a guess at what we're going to find out? So, uh, this is all unplugged, and I've got resistors hanging out all over the place here, so hopefully nothing bumps anything off. That looks like the only screw holding this, is it? It is. So now the, the problem with this is you can see how all these wires are tacked in here, right? Uh, if I flip this over, there's a really good chance that some of these wires are going to break off. And then, of course, I'm going to have to locate where they go after this. So what do you think the back side of this is going to look like? Ugh, let's find out. Some people put these together very well. By the looks of this, this here could be put together somewhat well. Uh, I really don't know at this time. That is kind of tight in here, isn't it? No, no, it isn't. Okay. Just things are wrapped around. Oh, uh, yeah, my guess is... Yeah. yeah, so if this thing was to break, you know, look at this thing. You know, I don't think I'd want to be getting in here. Look at this burnt wiring and and uh, connect the dots, right? That's what really what this thing is. Yeah, so, uh, and the, this here looks like that piece of paper that they had on the back side here just to cover everything up. Some writing on the back here. Yeah, so, so I have a feeling that this thing here was just assembled in, in Japan, or maybe over here, by somebody from Japan, who knows. Uh, since it's at 200 volts line, I, I would think that uh, it was probably done over there. And uh, somebody probably used this for just some trinketry, so something like that. I don't know if the thing's going to still work. Do you think it's still going to work after moving all that around? Let's pull it back in and find out. Yeah, touch it. Uh-oh. We're missing one. Maybe it just didn't want to start.
Oh, there it is. Okay. I thought maybe a wire had broken off. So, that's the problem whenever you're dealing with stuff like this. It's usually tacked together so crude. Well, kind of like what I've done here just to make the thing work at, at 110. And uh, it's actually a little low right now because it's current limited. I could uncurrent limit it. Now it's through. So, at any rate. So, that that's, yeah, it's working. So, I could technically use this thing for some sort of light sequencer. But what I'm going to do is just... I'll leave these tacked in here like this for future reference and uh, you know just you know put this thing in a box so who knows bend these over let's see you can see I just tacked it on it came right off right so put that back on there again these leads are so uh, they don't want to take solder at all but you know what makes them take solder without any question is putting a dab of number 835 on it I get that question all the time. Paul, what kind of flux do you like using? This has been sitting for a bit, so the tip is being a little bit angry. Okay, so here we go. That'll work now. So this 835 is great stuff. It still isn't working. Boy, that must be really... Oh, there it is. And that'll make it take solder right now. So here we go. Get the nice little smoke as it's baking the impurities to the surface and there it is so that'll stay on there now that's a nice good connection so uh, I get that question a lot uh, I just use an old ink bottle and I've taken the needle off because of uh, just safety reasons if you leave the needle on these things and you have these things by the bench I used to do that all the time uh, you could come to a close call if you ever bend over and that's not worth the risk. So I just take the needle off. And now I, when I'm building circuit boards and stuff, I just dab the 835 onto the circuit board itself. And, uh, you know, put a little dot there with just the way that it sits. And then put it away. So uh, this is MG Chemicals number 835. Probably the absolute best flux I have ever used. So there you go. It's an RRA flux. It's activated. It works very, very well. So, so these are all fine. I just bend them over like so. And I can just leave this in here. And uh, put that over like so. And then in the future, I just have reference for this. So that's basically it for this uh, for this little project. Look at that. It still buckles up. Oh, will this one go in? No way. Not it. That's why that wasn't buckled up before. It ah, won't, won't go in. So there it is, the little project. It uh, looks like a radio. It's not a radio. Uh, it's uh, you know a bunch of different pieces of aluminum put together with outlets, and it turned out to be a sequencer that uh, that uh, that does just different random stuff. Uh, shut it off. Turn it back on. Random stuff. There it is. I think that little neon bulb isn't right behind there. Yeah. So there you go. Probably get moved. So that's a typical Johnson counter right there, done with uh, discrete type flip flops. There you have it. If you're enjoying my videos, you can let me know by giving me a big thumbs up and hang around. There'll be many more videos like this coming in the near future. We'll be taking a look at vacuum tube and solid state electronic devices alike. So if you haven't subscribed, now would be a good time to do that as well. If you want to be notified as soon as I post a new video, don't forget to tap the bell symbol. If you're interested in taking your electronics knowledge to the next level and learning electronics in a very different and effective way and gaining access to many of my personal electronic inventions and designs, you're definitely going to want to check out my ongoing electronics course on Patreon. I'll put the link just below the video's description under the Show More tab, and I'll also pin the link at the top of the comment section. So if you click on the link, it'll take you right there. All right, until next time, take care. Bye for now.